They say you should never do a food shop when you're hungry, as you'll end up grabbing the first thing you see, overspending, and it's probably not going to be very good for you. Well, you know what? Dating after a long break can be a bit like that. Hello and welcome, gentlemen. Are you over 50 and finding yourself back in the dating game? Or even considering putting yourself back in the dating game? Maybe you're stepping out after years of a long relationship. Or you're simply ready to rediscover love. Well, you're in the right place. Today, I'm diving into the exciting world of dating after 50. Or more specifically, what to look for and what to avoid, especially if you're considering a new relationship. I'm here to share the top 10 tips that will boost your confidence and make your dating journey hopefully more enjoyable and successful. Whether it's just a case of updating your style, embracing modern dating etiquette and avoiding the pitfalls, or simply learning to enjoy the process, I've got you covered. And at the end, a bonus tip, just to make sure you sort of check yourself and don't come across as a bit leery or sad looking, definitely stay for that. Look. I get it. Maybe you've just come from a long relationship, you know, and the idea of dating at this age is daunting. I get that. But think again. You know what? It could be a time filled with possibilities, adventures, and yes, even romance. You know, that can still exist if that's what you're looking for. I'm going to talk about how you can bring your best self to the table, how to communicate effectively, and even tackle the world of online dating. And trust me, it's not as scary as it sounds. So whether you're looking to find that special someone or just want to explore what dating over 50 has to offer, stay tuned. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, toggle that notification bell, because I'm going to be doing more videos like this in the future and you don't want to miss those. I promise to keep it fun, insightful, and most importantly, you know, real. Because let's face it, you're not just older, you're wiser. And that is your superpower in the dating world. Grab a coffee, get a seat, and let's dive into these life-changing tips. And remember, the best is yet to come. When I came out of a long relationship, you know what? The last thing I wanted to do was get into another relationship. I mean, to me, that just seemed like pure madness. Look, I know some people are different. I know some people sort of panic and feel that somehow they must have an instant replacement or that somehow being single is, is a a sign of failure or something like that. But no, I spent the next three years consciously being single, embracing the bachelor life after a long, long relationship. And I loved it. It's just me and my kids. And then when my kids weren't there, just me. I could do what I want, when I want, how I want. Oh my Lord, it was brilliant. Most importantly though, I rediscovered myself, what I wanted out of life and what I didn't want out of life. The reason I got back into dating after this wonderful bachelorhood, curiosity. But I was able to go back in without pressure, without desperation, you know, that hungry shopper dilemma. I set the bar high because I was not that bothered whether I was successful or not. I spent a long, long time browsing. No, 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 no. And I opened my mind to possibilities. So embrace your age and maturity. Recognize that your age and experience are assets. Be proud of your life experiences. Convey them confidently. Your maturity, wisdom, and life skills are attractive qualities. You've lived the life. You've probably done some things, things that you might not think are that amazing. I remember years and years ago, I was made redundant and I went to a career coach, an executive career coach, part of the redundancy package. And she stripped things back and went through my CV. And in it, there were some things which I didn't think were that important, but to her, not knowing the full background to it, was intriguing. And she asked me about them. And then hearing it back from somebody else made me think, actually, yeah, that was quite a, quite a major feat. It was actually, I, I wrote a play and took it to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. But at the time, it, you know, it didn't seem that big a thing. But when someone else looks at it, to them, it's like, wow, that's an interesting thing that you did in your past life. So 
you've lived your life. You've got interesting stories to tell, hopefully. You've had adventures. You've traveled the world. Or maybe you haven't, but at least you've, you've lived a life. And that can be an attractive quality. Update your style. You know what? Ensure your wardrobe is current and flattering. Now, look, this is not about looking younger. You know, it's not about going, oh, right, yeah, let's get myself a baseball cap and put it the wrong way around and hang out with the kids, yo, and wear your, your pants halfway down your, your butt, whatever. No, right? It's about looking your best and feeling comfortable. You know, one of the first things I did when I came out of my old relationship, my ex-partner, she used to love shopping, right? At shopping for herself, shopping for other people, it didn't matter. And if she saw a bargain, she grabbed it. And she'd go, oh, I've got this shirt. I've got this polo shirt. No, I didn't mind at the time. I don't mind the odd polo shirt. But, you know, they weren't really me. Unless they were like genuine Fred Perry polo shirts. But that's a different thing. When I was single, it was like T-shirts all the way. You know, you see the CEO of uh, Silicon Valley companies. Plain T-shirt, jeans, maybe Converse, trainers, whatever it was. Simple, right? Men in their 40s and 50s in Converse, a T-shirt, a plain T-shirt. It's nice, simple, clean. Nothing wrong in that. Maybe your clothes and wardrobe just needs a little bit of updating. Consider, are your clothes dated? There are clothes that are suitable for men of your age, but are more modern. Maybe your spectacles, you know? Have you always worn the same spectacles for years and years? Maybe they could do with an update. After all, they're like the front cover of a book. You know, they're on the, they're on the face here. There's something that you're probably on you if you wear glasses on you all the time. Could they be upgraded? Could they be slightly more interesting? You know, I, I went for color, you know, like blue ones. My next pair would be slightly more bold. Embrace the fact that you wear glasses if you wear glasses. This also applies to grooming habits. You know what? A fresh haircut. Not that I have much choice in life, but maybe a, a, a groomed beard if you, you know, got nothing up here. Maybe a groomed beard, a new moustache, whatever it is. Just tidy yourself up a bit. Have you got sort of extra hairs growing out your eyebrows? Tidy up. All of that. Just keep a well-maintained appearance because that will go a long, long way. Look after yourself. It'll make you feel better for it. Be open to new experiences. Now, look, I must admit, anybody who knows me, I'm a creature of habit and after many, many years, I don't like change. But one thing I have learned is once you sort of get past that barrier of, oh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna change my routine, I don't wanna break my habit, often those new activities and new interests that you do dive into become really refreshing. So as I said, this could mean trying out online dating, joining clubs or groups that align to your interests, or being open to dates that involve new experiences. Try things a bit left field, don't always go for the kind of, you know, coffee or lunch or something like that. Maybe an experience of some sort. Communicate clearly and honestly. Now, this not only counts about being clear about your intentions and desires to potentially the person you're looking to date and stuff like that, but I would say it means being clear about your intentions and desires to yourself. Yeah? Be honest about who you are. Don't try to be somebody else. Honesty about your past, what you're looking for in a relationship and your future goal is key to building a solid foundation. Don't compromise. I mean, I say don't compromise. We have to make small compromises in life. Otherwise, we'll never find that fit. But have some lines, some red lines that you know from your past experience are things you don't want to cross, yeah? And on those, don't compromise, because you'll only end up repeating the same mistakes you made in the past. You're older and you're wiser and you deserve it. You, you owe it to yourself to not compromise on things that made you unhappy previously. Life's too short. Don't rush things. Give yourself and your dates time to get to know each other. You know, don't grab the first thing that you see in the supermarket. Go in there without feeling hungry or desperate. Go in there open. Ask yourself, is this right? Does this feel right? The sooner that you're honest earlier in that kind of dating process, the easier it is to walk away, move on and say, sorry, 
not for me. Avoid rushing into a new relationship or, and this is absolutely crucial, comparing your date to your previous partner. That is poisonous. Draw a line over that last relationship, whether it was happy, unhappy, whatever it is. The past is another country. The future is another country. My current partner always makes reference to things that I may have done in my past, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, as though it was like last week or something. And to me, it's madness. It's like, that was a different person. My cells have probably regenerated that many times. I probably am physically a different person than I was 25 years ago. So forget your past in terms of comparison. You are a different person now. So what you're looking for in a date or relationship is very, very different from what you had before. So just remember that. Stay positive and focus on the present. As I said, forget the past to a certain degree, other than learn the lessons of your past, but move on. While it's natural to have moments of comparison with your past relationship, as I said, try to focus on the present and the future. Stay positive and avoid dwelling on past relationships during dates. Oh my God, walk away from that. Sometimes it's tempting to talk about past relationships and you might be on a date and they're talking about past relationships. But you know what? You need to want to move off that subject ASAP because it doesn't help. And if your date is talking about their past relationship too much, then maybe they're still sort of stuck in that relationship and maybe she's not right for you. Understand modern dating etiquette. Do you know what? You know, it's a young man's game. Dating apps and all of that was something that I never ever tried until, as I said, I was in my 50s. There was a certain nervousness. Am I doing the right thing? Am I on the right dating app? I mean, you know, some dating apps are, let's say, not for dating. Uh, they're for a bit of, let's just say, exercise. But other ones are, are more, you know, specifically people looking for relationships. Find the app that has a reputation for the sort of thing that you're looking for. If you're new to modern dating practices, take time to understand them. As I said, this includes online dating etiquette. I mean, ask your kids, whatever, if they're dating, if they're in their, in their 20s or something, and they use dating apps or, you know, just to get, or somebody at work, if you're not too embarrassed, just to sort of check, am I doing this right? You know, dating etiquette now is all about having that sort of text relationship beforehand. You know, my first date was, you know, straight onto WhatsApp and, you know, you have a back and forth and you sort of fill them out through texting and stuff like that. It's all about understanding the modern relationship norms. Take care of your health. Physical fitness and health are important at any age. Staying active and maintaining a healthy lifestyle not only boosts your confidence, believe me, you know, it's a sort of wake up call. I'm not saying go to the gym and turn into a kind of, you know, alpha male or whatever that, but you owe it to yourself to kind of give yourself a bit of boost and exercise can do that. Exercise is good for the brain here. It's good for your confidence. It's good for your well-being, and just keeps you healthy and effectively younger. You know, I know there are some people who come out of relationships and then in a way they use that focus. Maybe they've, you know, come out with certain sadness or disappointment. There's a guy on YouTube I follow and he's an ultra marathon runner now, but he wasn't when he left his relationship, but now he is and he's super fit. In fact, you know, I, I, asp I aspire to have a body like him. I'm never going to, but you know, he went full hell for leather back into the kind of exercise and stuff like that. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about general exercise. You know, I've done another video about being over 50 and how strength exercise is really important just to maintain your kind of muscle structure, let alone anything else. So that's what I'm talking. Stay active, maintain a healthy lifestyle. I say it will boost your confidence. And of course, at the end of the day, if you like what you see, it's gonna make you more attractive to potential partners. Listen and show empathy. Good communication involves listening as much as talking. You know, that idea of asking questions. I said earlier, you may have lived a life, you know, you're 50 now, you may have had some interesting life experiences. I've had, I'd like to say, 
many. I've been lucky enough. I've travelled the world. I've been to some exciting places. I've done some exciting things. So I have a story or two to tell. But don't hog the conversation. Listen and ask questions. Ask open-ended questions. Let your date do the talking. That way, show your genuine interest in your date's lives, their thoughts, their feelings. You know what? And this one's especially for the women there. When you're dating a woman, they love that kind of thing. You know, they love empathy. You know what they say? Men are from Mars and women are from Venus. And when women ask you a question, they don't necessarily want a factual answer. They want a kind of a feeling, an empathy. They want to see that. Yeah, it can be annoying sometimes because I just want to, I'm a guy. I just want to deliver a fact or a useful information or a useless bit of information. But that's not about listening. Listening is about empathy and it creates that deeper connection. Be patient with yourself and others. Finding the right person can take time and that's okay. And maybe, you know what? You may say, I'm, I'm not comfortable with a relationship right now. All these people sound really interesting, but I, I wanna keep some of my life back. Uh, I wanna separate some of my life from that sort of this dating or this other person. And that's fine, just to sort of establish the rules of the relationship. The person that you're kind of into or dating might want a lot more than you do. And you need to kind of establish that. You know, as I said, don't compromise on the things you're not prepared to compromise on. Finding the right person takes time, as I said, and that's okay. So enjoy the process. You know, it's, it's a cliche, but it's a journey. It's not always the destination. Enjoy that journey. Be kind to yourself. Be true to yourself. And of course, be kind and just generally a decent all-round chap to the people you meet. And finally, that bonus, I promise. Age. What age is suitable? Now, there's another YouTuber I follow, and I think he has a slightly toxic attitude to, to females. Uh, and he's very much about the alpha male driving a big sports car compensation and, you know, dating younger women. Never date women. You know, he says, never date women your own age. They've got too much baggage and all of that. Well, you know what? I'm not sure. You know, when he says older women, he's talking about, you know, women your own age. But just, just stop a minute, right? Wait, you're not Leonardo DiCaprio. You're not Brad Pitt. And well, if you are, good luck to you. And you could ignore this next bit. But if you're not, if you're an ordinary guy like me, ask yourself, right, this question. What would you think if you saw an ordinary guy, say in his 50s, who's not a rock star or a film star or anything like that, dating a woman half his age? What would you think? You'd think, okay, what's the catch? Or he must be loaded. She's only dating him for the money. I mean, look at him. In my opinion, when you see that, it just looks wrong. And if I'm honest, a little bit creepy, a little bit pervy. So as a general rule, just to check yourself, I always apply this rule, okay? And it's half plus nine. Half your age plus nine years is the minimum, okay? The minimum. Just to avoid that kind of, ugh, you know, creepy vibe. I mean, if you're a dad and you've got a kid who's in their like late teens or early 20s, then it's going to look creepy and your kids will probably tell you, dad, that's a bit yucky. You know what I mean? I'm having to redo this bit because my mic died on me. Anyway, I had a bit of a disagreement slash argument with my current partner when I explained to her this equation of mine, because I think she misunderstood me thinking that half plus nine is the target age. No, no, let's be very, very clear. It's the minimum age. And for me, even that's too young, if I'm really honest, because at the end of the day, what are you going to talk about? Sure, if you're watching some alpha male give you advice about relationships and all of that, they might say, you know, oh, forget the older woman, i.e. woman of the same age. They've got too much baggage with them and all of that. But, you know, younger women, they just effectively become trophies because what are you going to talk about? Where's the connection that you're going to have if they're like, you know, 25 or something crazy like that? 
yeah, looks good on the arm, but that's slightly disrespectful to the partner, you're, you know, your other half, really, if you think about it in that way, if that's all you like them for. Anyway, that's just my opinion. It's not a target age, it's the minimum age, and it's just really a sense of, you know, checking yourself so you don't look a bit uh, and all of that. Anyway, just my little safety rule to make sure you're staying on the right side of, you know, cool. Remember, dating at any age can be an exciting journey. And that's what it is. Don't forget, it's a journey. It's not a destination. Don't focus on the destination. Enjoy the moment. Enjoy the journey. It's an opportunity to meet new people, learn about yourself. And that's the key here. Learn about what you want in life. Maybe learn more about yourself. And perhaps find a companion who fits that new self, the new you, the you of now not the you of the past. As I said, that's what it's all about. It's about discovering who you are, what you want, and hey, if you find a companion that kind of interlocks with that, it was a bit David Brent then, um, that's really great. Stay open-minded, stay confident, and most important, stay true to you. Remember, it is about you at the end of the day, especially if you've come from a relationship that you perhaps you didn't like or made you unhappy or whatever it is, this is an opportunity to do something for you. And as I said, if you find that companion that fits the new you, then great. Get what you want out of this, not what other people think that you need or various advice from friends and stuff like that. Think about what you need in life, what you enjoy in life, where you want to go in life and Stay focused on that as you enjoy the journey and don't compromise on your lines in the sand. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. I hope you found it useful. If you did, put the comments down below. Let me know what you think about my equation of half plus nine. Do you think it's a load of nonsense or do you think you should date, you know, younger women over women of your own age? Give me the reasons why, if you think that is the case. Put it down in the comments. I'm interested to hear that. And if you've enjoyed this video, hit the likes because I like it, YouTube likes it, and it helps people like you find content just like this. And if you're new to my channel, do me the great honor, hit that subscribe button, toggle that notification bell, and that way you'll know when I upload videos just like this. And that's what I plan to do. There'll be more videos aimed at men in their 50s and general life stuff. And if you want more stuff like this, why don't you check out the videos over here? This one's here. I think you find them interesting. Thanks for your time.